helemaal een half uur een dag het zijn gespoord. Het beest heb 10% vetter. Tjeng, tjeng. Wat heb je gehoord, Tjeng, dat wil ik ook zeggen. Tjeng, gebruik ons producten. Dat is fijn ook zeggen. Bij deze alcohol de Limburgse correctie. En wie is het? Bullhead. I thought this was the co-host story. <laughs> he can be a little stubborn. Some old bullhead. That would be the co-host story. <laughs> no, just because he's so bullheaded. <laughs> but there, there is that. Uh, yeah. Or or alternately, because it's about people illegally trading cow and bull hormones, which is also very much a thing that he likes to do in his spare time. I, I, I got to say, I never thought I'd see a gangster film about beef steroids. Yeah, it's one of those. Okay, so this played at Fantastic Fest last year, and I didn't go see it because that was kind of the description. And I was like, I'm not sure why this is fantastic. And it just doesn't sound very interesting. Well, now, it plays right into my view of Fantastic Fest. Yeah. Which is, we've brought together a collection of movies that are all, ooh, sci-fi and, and horror-based. Um, Yeah, I guess. But mostly they're here because they make you go... Man, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of that. And there's a lot of that in Bullhead, but that's because it's not at all what it sounds like from the descriptions I've heard. This is a really hardcore crime thriller of a film with some pretty disturbing shit that happens throughout it. Hell, in the first 20 minutes is one of the most disturbing things I've ever imagined happening in any film ever. I just, I, it, you know, wow. Uh, this film had a lot of balls to have that little balls in that opening okay, scene. Okay, uh, wait. I guess I'm not sure what you're talking about in the first 20 minutes. I, I know something very disturbing that's like on that level of like, wow, I could live my whole life without seeing well, this. We have but it doesn't s- happen until way in the middle. Well, no, oh. not really. No, the sequence with the, the little kid? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty early on. I don't know. I felt like I was watching it a long time mm. before it got to it. Okay, there. well, you do have to know that part because it's a major plot element of the film is that the lead character in here played... By M- Matthias uh, Scoen. Let's 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 stop for one second. Yeah. Okay, this film is Belgian. Yes, and so we have to be excused for mispronouncing any name. Yes, as a matter of fact, I feel like we shouldn't even try because okay, you go like, oh, in Belgium they speak French, and part of it. Yeah, the other part is Dutch. Plus, they're drunk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, between the the Dutch who the called the 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 Flemings and the uh and the French. Whoever they have a different name, uh, Walu they call him or something. I can't really? Remember. Yeah, there was something else they they they, they referred to him as, and I don't even know if that was like a derogatory term. But uh, there's no way we're pronouncing these names. Yeah. So just we're it, gonna. It's, it's not gonna happen. This is phonetic, and that's as good as you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or close approximation thereof phonetic, because even that I'm not all that good at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, this this uh lead character. Uh, played by Matthias Show Schoenertz. <laughs> that, that, the lead character's, character's name is Jackie. Yeah, he, Jackie. He, there you go. Yeah, that's uh, easy. He, early on as a child, experiences a trauma to his testicles pre-puberty uh. that makes it where he, as an adult, has to continue to inject hormones to be able to just – he had to do it just to go through puberty. You right. Know? Otherwise, he wouldn't have. Well, know? it's one of these things where you see this guy and he's a, a, you know, a, a cow – I mean, a beef – farmer his whole family yeah people. whole family they're all they, they all uh, you know run cattle and this guy is huge and you look at his face and it's <clears throat> just his expressions are not right yeah. just the way he breathes the way he one eye is half closed the way he doesn't make eye contact something's broken about this yes guy. and he's huge like like huge as in muscular and you see him in you know pulling out little vials that he's inject himself with so it's like wow dude where are you studying to be bane in the next batman movie right <laughs> um it doesn't until the middle it really was not until the middle of the film that they finally get around to showing you like well this is what happened to him right why he's doing that where where first you went like oh you, you goddamn a uh, roid rage motherfucker and then you see what happened you're like oh shit dude i'm so sorry but that's kind of the balance of this whole film and the way it makes you end up like giving a shit about this guy on some level because he started off on the wrong foot that wasn't his fault at, at all. all. And his life has been fucked up ever since. And he does often try to do the right thing, but you get this feeling that he's often, he's just incapable of telling what the right thing even is anymore. Right. Like that sort of moral structure isn't one that he can comprehend at this point of his life. Yeah. There is that feeling because, uh, I mean, he's had to be on, you know, d- different types of steroids and testosterone his whole life. It's like, his whole life just seems like it's been artificial to him. Like, like he's got no way of relating to things the way normal people do. This really is the co-host story. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's not here, so we can talk about. We him. can talk about. Him. <laughs> we L- love little, little payback. <laughs> we love co-host mostly, mostly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, there's just even times when you know, I mean, the, the the bullhead thing, you know, where you can see the comparison between him and some of these bulls that they're injecting. Yeah. But uh, within all this, this is all part of a big crime story because. What's going on is you got your illegal traders. They, they, they open with like, hey, we got this new hormone. You're injecting the cows, makes them fatter. And nobody can detect it. You know, we're going to make this deal. We're going to sell you a bunch of this and that. Uh, but there's a politician, uh, I mean, a policeman who ends up getting killed. And so that always changes the game. It does change the game. Um, they're sort of working with gangsters, but there's this other thing going on. And they're like, hey, do you guys do this? Oh, not us. But the heat's coming down on it. The like, longer it goes on. You start to see that the police are not letting this go. Matter of fact, anybody involved, even peripherally involved in this, is being watched. And the guy who's uh, been, uh, I think the character's name was uh, Dietrich, who was his childhood best friend, who was there when the trauma happened to him. Um, they've grown up. They've kind of grown apart. They still see each other. Yeah, they're both they're both criminals. Yes, <laughs> but just in different groups. In, in, yeah, in different groups, and they're sort of overlapping. Um, but. Man, I don't know how much to reveal. Yeah, it's hard to to know. I will say this: that uh, one of the key things in the movie is that that uh, Jackie, the guy with the hormone issues, encounters a girl who was I, I guess she was the she was the sister. She was, she was sister of the of the kid that messed him up. Yeah, and he, you know, after all these years, sees her. She has no idea who he is, but as we see from his. <laughs> his collection of pictures and yeah. his, all of his, his, his notebooks that he has collected, uh, that he has not forgotten a thing about her. And it's, you know, you're wondering what kind of film this is going to be. Is this going to turn into a horror movie? Is he going to stalk her? Uh, and while, but to the, the point where he's like, I don't give a shit about all this other stuff going on. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it is weird how it plays with him because I, I found him to be a very unlikable character. Until they show his backstory, and then you have sympathy for him. Yeah, well, you understand a little more why he is the way he is, and uh, you know, even so. <laughs> but, but well, that's the thing. Even so, it's like it's like that. You you have you say, I really felt sorry for him, wanted better for him. And at the same time, it's like, yeah, but right now I have to deal with who he is at this point, and this is not. And even like with him meeting with her and talking with her, and her seeming almost like. Like kind of innocent, like maybe I could form some relationship with her. You see things like this, like that book he has, yeah, the scrapbook he's collected of stuff on her, and then you go like, no, no, dude, uh, uh-uh, uh, yeah, uh-uh. you you can't help but root for somebody like that because of everything they went through. I mean, it's like the worst thing ever, but you know, <laughs> he's messed up. There's yeah, you're, there's just no fixing. Yeah, yeah, things, exactly. You know, uh, and I don't know. There's a lot going on here. This is the type of film that I feel like is going to deserve more than one viewing because it's very dense with with plot. There's so much going on and there's so many it's all shades of gray. In fact, I did have to watch it twice. Hmm. Because the first time going through it, I uh I just found myself because there was so much the language barrier, um, you know, the the language, you know, so much of the Dutch they're speaking. I don't know, it just wasn't coming across the way I guess I'm so more used to watching Spanish and and, and French films. Where they kind of they I don't know, connect with them right off the bat, yeah, and it, it's just the language itself. And I kind of zoned out, and then when it got to the end, I was like, "All right, what was that about?" And I was like, "You know what? I need to go back and watch this again." Right? There's a reason they got the the nomination for best foreign film this year. Oh, right, at the Oscars. Right, so right. You're like, this has to be worth seeing. Yeah, there has to be something here you missed. Right, right. And so then going back through it, I was like, okay, now I get it. I'm you know got really into it. I will say though that. By the the end, the conclusion, I wasn't all that thrilled with it. Yeah, I I felt like like it could have done something other and step. It went away that I was like, you know, you watching something and you think about how these things end. I'm like, all right, I know how movies like this usually end. I'm hoping this will do something different, and it kind of does. Kind, I thought it kind of did. I mean, it's not certainly not you know note for note a Hollywood ending. No, oh, no, no. I'm not saying it's a Hollywood ending. I wasn't thinking Hollywood ending oh, at all. Okay. I'm thinking more. Foreign film, artsy film ending. Oh, okay. And and it went that way when I thought, well, maybe this might be the one that 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 does push it to something else. Because because where it, so much of it seems like it starts out like it's a crime movie, and then it goes, no, it's really a character piece. Right. No, wait, no, it's really a crime movie. Look at all the crime stuff we're showing. We got to see how this is going to play out. 
And then at the end, it goes like, oh, no, it's back to being a character piece. And it has like that character piece ending. And I was That's like, a floor cleaner. Like that character piece ending. And I was That's like, a floor cleaner and a dessert <laughs> topping. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> it, it almost made me wish the crime stuff wasn't even in there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can agree with that. I, I like the crime stuff. Uh, if I have a problem with this film, it's only that it takes so long to really have any clue what's going on at yes. all. The way it's structured, it's almost like they're intentionally trying to just lead you through a fog for almost the first 40 minutes or so of the damn thing. It's not until they start like showing a lot more flashbacks of the past that you start understanding, getting some hold on what's happening. But even then, all the way through with the stuff that was going on with the crime story and that intrigue, I was never totally clear on all the aspects of what was happening with it. I mean, it seemed like the personal story was the one they really wanted to tell, but built the crime thing around it, even though, like I said, I did enjoy it. Because it's brutal at points and surprising. Sure. Uh, it, that that was kind of like, okay, well, this is the way we sell this character piece that you want to tell. Well, see, well, see, well, well okay, you and I have the same point. Maybe we just felt differently yeah. about it. Right. Like, it didn't bug me that that's the choice they made, but it felt like they it was a little uneven with the attention that was paid. Right. Because I, I felt like with so much attention is put on the crime element uh, elements of the story, that it becomes its own story that competes with the character piece story. It's almost like it's a distraction that becomes too distracting to where I'm going, where I'm, I'm always like, like, well, wait a minute. Well, maybe I want to know about this other thing. And they're saying like, no, 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 no. This is what, what you should focus on. It's like, right. Well, I don't know. You kind of showed me all this other stuff. I, I want to see that. Now. I, I agree with that, except in the sense that it's too much, but not enough because it doesn't feel the crime story doesn't feel like a complete story. The character piece does. Yes. Um, you know, like, okay, well, I was really, I really liked the crime story. I felt like you wanted to give us more of that, of more what was going on with all those other characters. And it just felt like it was just kind of dancing around that. They're very, they're very tertiary characters in this whole story. Um, most, most, everybody except for, uh, Jackie, Diedrich, and I guess her name's Lucia is really yeah. the, the only really main characters in this at all. And, uh, it's just awkward the way it's put together. Okay, we we really are saying the same thing. Okay, case. fair <laughs> enough. Sometimes we gotta we gotta dance around the ballroom floor a few times right. before we figure out we're doing the same stuff. Because that, all those other characters that I was paying attention to, ultimately, you're right. They they end up by by the way it ends. It's like oh, they really were just tertiary characters, and they they weren't as important as I was made to feel they were. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I feel that way too. And I only saw it once, and it I was having trouble. To the point where I was like, I was a little mad for the first 40 minutes, like I said. But uh, how is this so great? I don't understand <laughs> right. at all. And by the end, I was like, okay, I get it. But I also know that I missed a lot because of how confusingly it's put together. Sure. I do want to see it a second time for that reason. I mean, for, like I said, if it's nominated for a Best Foreign Film, usually that's the one nomination that everything in it is usually at least worth watching. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well I mean, Oscar time comes around. I'll have to vote for it because I think it's the only the, the foreign only one films you I've saw. seen. <laughs> Plus, you know, it's it's a, it's kind of a hometown movie because our our boys at the Alamo Draft House and Tim League, they're I'm pretty sure they're distributing this. Yeah, yeah, like with his new Draft House films or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, there is a, just like a total Bane scene where it's just the guy's giving him stuff. Like, all right, this right here, I don't give this to everybody. I'm giving it to you because I trust you to only take a little bit of yeah, it. Yeah, that guy's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, ejects uh, the whole bottle. Yeah, the, this stuff will start your heart. Uh, this is actually its its street name is Venom. Uh, this right here, if you take two tablespoons, you'll explode. So don't do <laughs> so that. So just take one. <laughs> but I like how the guys sound like all this shit is super jacked up. And um, I usually won't sell one of these to people. Oh, but you're going to buy them all? Okay, I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> buy the whole load? Get the totally deadly stuff free! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actual snake venom right here. It's, it's you know, you. how do you have sympathy for a guy who shoots up hormones? Well, when you have this guy's background, you have sympathy for him. But even so, it's the, it's not – I don't care what your reasoning is. It's going to fuck up your brain really bad. And this guy, by the time we meet him, is so fucked up that he's injecting that stuff like a drinker in, in a Charles Bukowski novel. Yeah. You know? I mean, he's just – like he can take it like 10 times the recommended dose right. and does yeah. regularly. He's got a whole refrigerator full of nothing but hormones. Yeah. And it's really distressing watching this. It is distressing because you you can see how – He's probably lived his whole life trying stuff and never achieving the effect he wanted it to have. He's kind of simple, really, at yeah. this point. You would think if he hadn't taken all those hormones, he would have a beautiful singing voice. In his <laughs> 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 he would be a castrata. There's not many of those around anymore. And at the same time, it's like, man, you feel so sorry for him. And yet the guy is 
a pretty big racist and homophobe. <laughs> yeah. He's not a nice guy. Like I said, he's pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> it really pushes it. Yeah, he's uh he's a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> and it's, I, I wish i could say it's well shot it's got beautiful cinematography at points especially in the later half it of the does film. i mean really striking stuff but it just it just needed to be put together differently so it was more clear maybe it is more clear maybe there's inflections in the language that just don't translate through subtitle that would make would have made certain elements of it that much more self-explanatory but i i don't know i just maybe i'm stupid i mean but- it, it, it made me wonder like you know in that in Belgium, or maybe just in that part that's called Flanders, is is the you know the stupid Flanders? I yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> is is the whole you know um, uh, livestock hormone sc- scandal or or crime wave? Is that something that's huge? Is that a real? Thing? I mean, I mean, I don't even so much that's means how it's pathetic. They are there. They don't even get in trouble over real drugs. <laughs> They're treating bull steroids. Bulls. <laughs> I, just, I mean, it, it made me wonder if, if like it's one of those like. Where people there are watching, like, finally somebody's talking about this. The truth can be known. <laughs> We've struggled under the onus of, of bull steroids for decades now, and finally a film has the balls. Maybe that's well, the wrong not word. Not the wrong, wrong yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but man, I, I tell you, it's been a while since I, or maybe since last Fantastic Fest, but where I saw something that was so deeply disturbing to me and what happens, the, the tragedy that happens with the kid. It really was just like, uh, I, I, you guys tricked me. And usually I know to turn my head before something like this. Yeah. You, you totally pulled me into it. And I was not expecting yeah, that. Yeah. It's just feeling like stand by me for a minute there. And then yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, there's a lot of things in here I think are very well done, but there's, uh, as I said, there's things I just plain didn't like about it. Uh, overall though, I, I feel like I want to give this film a matinee and I also feel insecure about that because <laughs> once again, it's a film that, that, that at least as an English speaking viewer, I feel deserved two viewings. I'm sure the people at Draft House Films love to hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> Go and see it twice. <laughs> well, well, I, I would say this to people. Hey, it's a foreign film where there's crime in it. And, you know, maybe if, if you're somebody who like poop who's on foreign film, Here's one that has a very hard edge to it. Yeah. If you're worried about being like the, like not knowing any of the foreign films when you're at your Oscar party, this is the one you see that you can sound like, you know, you're the real film buff. Exactly. And you won't have to sit there and suffer as they go, life, life, death, a flower, tree of life. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I'm, I'm seen as, as a matinee. Maybe a low matinee. I'm not Ooh, sure. Wow, that little, huh? <sighs> I mean, I mean, the things that are good about it are really good. Yeah. Um, but there are those things, those those big obvious things that go like, man, you you totally derailed me here, and just so much of it is just not <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> I feel like the bad guy. <laughs> like, I, there was a part of me that was like looking forward to it being over because I just did not like being in that world. Right. No, I know it's not plus. <laughs> <laughs> just from the description you can tell that this is not a world that you really want to know too much about anyway. i mean even when when nothing's going on they're giving a c-section to a cow <laughs> yeah <laughs> Did you? and there's there's just no faking that no there's not <laughs> <laughs> that's not something they build a big prosthetic cow and a baby cow you actually see them cut open this cow and pull out a baby cow and it's not it's not good that's not nice i no, don't want to see no. that it, it, i'm, yeah. I'm good miracle of birth yay joe somebody else buddy i mean know. honestly that was one of those things where you know i am like oh and i'm like why was that scene even in here it's it's oddly graphic in a lot of sequences in the film that we like wow that was much more than i ever wanted to yeah see. and it was one of those scenes where i thought you know what if it opened with this, this was in the early part of the film it would give you like it, it'd be more like okay we're just showing you what it's like for these guys like this 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 is their job this is what they do but it's way in the last 30 minutes of it where it comes in it's like what was that about yeah and i almost wish i had hated this film so we could have given it a, some old bowl. I know, head. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but we're not. We're not. We're it's, not. It's okay. Maybe I'm being too forgiving for it. Maybe I'm just too stupid to see how great it is. Uh, but, not, I, don't, I don't think you're being too forgiving. But we come down on a matinee. Yeah. So, yeah. Go see it. Sound like a big guy to all your friends <laughs> at the Oscar party. It's, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> 
Van allemaal geslaagd, Azië. Dat is ook laat.